Another quick review for you tonight, the Amez Instruments Thermal Infrared Camera. I'm just going to show you a little bit of things that come in the kit and show you a little bit of functionality on this camera. And uh, I won't go into all the specifics of this thing, but uh, I'll explain to you why I purchased this. We're going to use it again at work, just like some of the other tools I've reviewed before. And this was a cheap option. If you're going to do things, I would say, professionally with a camera like this, this may not be the one for you. But if you're looking for something quick to pick up, I found this at Harbor Freight and just use it for little things like checking heat signatures on bearings if you're looking for uh, heat issues in electrical boxes or around window panes and stuff like that. This is what comes in the kit. Uh, you get this case and it's got a nice little strap right here, uh, instruction packet, and you get a cable the camera itself, and they've already got a SD card, micro SD card, I believe it's a four gig card installed in the side right here for you. All right, let's talk a little bit about the camera, a few little features. The uh, temperature reading on this, it can go from negative four all the way up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, so it should be fairly uh, accurate for what you're looking to measure. If you need temperature ranges higher or lower than that, this isn't gonna be the camera for you. This screen is a 1.8 inch screen, so it's not the largest screen, but they kind of market this as a small portable camera, uh, thermal imaging camera. So if you need a screen larger than that, this also will not be the one for you. But for us, we needed just something small, pocket size, you can carry it just about anywhere. It does come with batteries. They go in this end right here. It's uh, four AAA batteries. You can even see where it is uh, written right there. And you've got a little screw and that end, if you can see that, where you would open that compartment and put the batteries in. You do get this little lanyard here on the bottom. It's got uh, a four gig card. We'll look at that uh, right in here on the side. Four gig card is in there. They claim up to 10,000 images can be stored on that card. And the cable I showed you earlier, you can download your images from that little port right there, or you can also uh, view them on the camera screen if you're wanting to see that. It's got three selectable colors that you can change how the heat signature looks on the camera, and we'll look a little bit deeper on that as I go through. You can change it to uh, from Fahrenheit to Celsius if you'd like to, and then it's got an adjustable emissivity from 0.1 to 1.0. We'll talk a little bit about what is emissivity so we can get a good understanding because it was a new word, even for myself. I'm going to show some of the camera functionality when I do that. These instruction sets will kind of make a little bit better sense if you wanted to pause right there. We're able to read some of that. Um, and then I'll go through the camera functionality once I move this kind of out of the way. First things, like I showed you, you've got the port here. You've got a trigger. This is allowing you to take the pictures or take the measurement, a temperature measurement, wherever you're aiming that towards. You've got a couple of buttons here, up and down buttons, back button, and the OK, almost like an enter button. And then you've got a power button. It looks a little hidden on here, but this is the power button. They want you to press and hold that for two seconds, and you will get this startup screen on the camera. Once the camera is on, hopefully you can see some of this. You have a battery indicator here in the top right. You have an indicator letting you know that there is an SD card in there. It's telling you what the temperature that it's reading right there. I believe that's in the center sen uh, sensor right there. Then you may or may not be able to see it, but there is a red. Uh, when I put something else underneath there that we will try to read the temperature on, there's a red square and there's a green square. Red square is going to be the hottest point that you're measuring, or the hottest point of the surface, and then the green is the coldest part of the surface. You've got a max temperature down here, and you've got a min temperature right here. And then you can cycle this thing through a different sets of menus just by hitting the OK button. These are the menus right here. You have SD card where you can actually hit OK again, and you can go into the photos that you've already taken, and you can view those. So we'll just take an example here. You have to hit OK. And there's an example of, say, uh, my hand underneath the camera. Hopefully you can see that. And then you can just hit the back button to go back through multiple of those photographs you took. We can go back all the way out. There's where you can change the different color patterns. So depending on what you're trying to look at there, uh, you can adjust that. And like I said, there's three different versions of color in that. 
emissivity. If we take a look, I'm gonna just read from the manual here. It starts to explain to you about uh, the amount of thermal energy that's emitted from the surface. So this is gonna help depending on what you're trying to read because you may put this over something and you're gonna get, uh, it's gonna look like there's no heat signature. So they do have different recommended settings here and you can go in here when you hit OK, you can change these settings and you can actually save those settings depending on what you normally are gonna read so you can have those uh, at any time if you know you read specifically different uh, types of materials. So right there it mentions kind of generally painted dull or dark surfaces have a higher emissivity. Metals and reflective surfaces have lower emissivity. So depends on what you're trying to read there and they kind of give you an idea like for glass, concrete, hot food, carbon, cast iron, copper, galvanized pipe, aluminum, and stainless steel. So you may want to preset some of those. They do have those kind of in there right now. It's at uh, 95, 80, 60, 30, and then it looks like this one uh, you can do some adjustment on here at the bottom. So we're going to back out of that. The next thing is your temperature unit there. That's where you can change to uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius, and then you can update the date here. Um, and basically you would go in there, just put the date and put the time. You can do a 24 hour clock, I think, and I do not have it checked right now, or a regular uh, 12 hour clock there. I put my phone here on the table because I'm gonna do some thermal imaging and show you what the camera would look like depending on uh, which setting you use here. So right now I've got the imaging camera on as low of a setting as it can be where you're almost looking through the screen and through the camera where it would see what's underneath the camera there. So you don't see a lot of that change in the thermal imaging or heat signature there. All you have to do is you could press this up or down button depending on how much of that imaging you want to see. You can already see the screen is starting to change where you can see what's hot on the table and what's the temperature difference. So right now I'm getting the hottest point is going to be right here about center of the cell phone and it's telling me it's about uh, 87 degrees. The max is about 89 with a min of 77 degrees. So the more you increase this right here, you can see how the color on that camera is gonna change where it kind of blacks out everything that's not hot. So if you're really wanting to focus in, and you can even see when my hand passes in front of the camera, my hand is right now warmer than the, the cell phone is. But you can see that image. Uh, I call it the predator image. If you've ever seen that movie, uh, it kind of gives you that thermal imaging look you can kind of see how it's changing. Again, if you want to be able to see the object, the, the neat thing about that is if you're really trying to see what am I actually looking at, you can you know, turn the thermal imaging down some so you can kind of see through the camera so you make sure it's, hey, I'm still pointed at the cell phone, I'm still pointed at the bearing, or I'm still pointed at a specific window or area, electrical component, and I'm trying to see if that part is overheating or not. So there is that setting there. Now, when you go back into the menu, how I showed you earlier, you can change the color. Just hit OK, and you can see it changed that color signature just a little bit. And now it's a little bit different image there. So it really depends on what you're trying to look at and how you're trying to represent that image. So then we could go back again. We'll change it to the third color option there, and then it will show you just a little bit different as well. So again, they kind of show you what's cold in this area is gonna be the purple, and then what's standing out is gonna be this blue, and you could even see as much my hand turning it a greenish yellow. Uh, hopefully you can see that, uh, that change on camera there. So we'll go back to the original setting. I kind of like this, uh, this setting right here where uh, it's that first setting I was showing you just a second ago how you're getting that, almost what I call that uh, predator image there, where it looks like you're looking through his eyes or through his mask there. That pretty much explains this camera functionality. And hopefully this is something that you see useful, something you could pick up for your toolbox. Like I mentioned, if you're doing this for a professional level, I don't know that this would be your camera that you're looking for, but you need a quick camera for your toolbox, something to use at home, just some quick verification. This would be an easy tool, cheap tool for you to buy. Keep it in your toolbox and use it for other purposes, even if you wanted to use it temporarily or use it at work for just for small projects or something. Hope this information was useful or helpful for you. And if it was, 
please subscribe and share. And that's to the point.